Today, I'm workshopping some ideas for a piña colada mead recipe. Let's get started. So I've wanted to do this for a while because I like piña coladas and I've never really known how to do it. Um, I just so happened to find a concentrate at my local supermarket, which you see right here. This stuff is generally made for mixing drinks, but surely it can be used in a mead. After picking it up, I realized I wanted to do more than just throw that into a brew. I wanted to try and make, quote, a natural version as well. So today I'm running a four-way test to see if I can make a good piña colada mead. Two of the meads will use the concentrate, and two will use natural flavors. I'm splitting the concentrate version into two options. The first one includes using the concentrate fermenting in the primary. The other will have the concentrate added after the primary and after I stabilize. The natural version will be done the same way. I'm using coconut chips and real cut up pineapple for it. I'm also doing some extra additions to it after the tasting, which you'll see in a moment. I started by making a giant batch of must and then splitting that out. I mixed up all my ingredients for the primary versions, at least. So here are the recipes for each one. Here are the starting gravities for each one as well. After they finished through the primary, I went ahead and stabilized everything and then added my fruit slash coconut and concentrate to those that needed it. Now I decided to make some additions to these. I thought that adding coconut water to the real ingredient versions would help add some more coconut profile to them. I also added some pineapple juice to bring out more of that profile. We were missing our rum profile from it because that's also in a piña colada. So I added about four ounces of rum to each. I did back sweeten with some more honey for each one. So here's everything that I added for each. Now before we get to tasting those brews, I will go ahead and spoil that the quote natural versions in this case were really messed up by my use of coconut water. I wanted to attempt a natural version again with more knowledge, so we started a new one. I believe this is the final recipe for me. Could there be tweaks to make it even better? I'm sure. However, I'm pretty pleased now. We gathered a new set of ingredients and decided to attempt a different coconut introduction this time. I wanted to try toasted coconut chips instead of the flakes I'd used before. Here's my starting recipe, and you can see the post-fermentation adjustments on the side. We cut up more pineapple and froze them so we could get more juice out of them. I didn't use pectic enzyme, that probably would have helped. We then started to mix up our starting recipe for this one. We added our pineapple in the primary to get that warm pineapple flavor. We will more than likely have to add some pineapple juice at the end anyways. The starting gravity for the final version was 1.052. We added our nutrients to this brew and let it start fermenting. It took about two weeks to finish fermenting and we let it set for an extra week. So we went ahead and racked off of that once it was done and put it into a new container. I felt like the pineapple presence was really nice, but still needed some brightness. I'm planning on adjusting that here soon. The coconut character was still not there. I went out and bought eight more ounces of toasted coconut chips and put them in a bag with some marbles and put it in the brew to sink to the bottom. I was really hoping that would pronounce that coconut character. Those sat for two weeks and the brew started to clear up even more. We then decided to go ahead and rack off those coconut chips and taste again. Spoilers, it still was not coconut-y enough. My final thought to add coconut flavor to this was to get coconut rum. This would kill two birds with one stone. I would get some rum flavor in the brew while possibly even getting some coconut flavor. After the primary, this was at 1.000. So we stabilized it with potassium sorbate so we could safely back sweeten. Once it was stabilized, we added one pound of clover honey to back sweeten. We also added eight ounces of coconut rum and six ounces of pineapple juice. The final gravity says 1.017 but now that we've added liquid and fortified it in a way, there isn't an easy way to know if that's accurate. So who knows? I went ahead and let that set to try and clear, and then we bottled it when it was ready. You're about to see the tasting of all five of these pina colada meads with a special guest. You will also get to see why coconut water is a big no-no in brewing. Here we go. All right, here we are for the tasting. I have my wife behind the camera. She's waving at you. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so uh, we're here for, for the final tasting. I do have one extra variation that I will say on screen that I didn't necessarily include. 
in the video. Um, we have an A through uh, F, essentially. And I'll put what each is on screen. We're gonna taste test through, and she doesn't know what's what. I honestly don't remember what's what from this. I just kind of quickly jotted them down. So you know what's on screen. Let's start with A. So okay. essentially just tell me what you think. First of all, A is very clear, mm -hmm. looks good. It's one of the points in that world for me. It's really coconutty. It is very coconut, yeah. Yeah, it tastes like coconut water. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit of pineapple. There's a little bit of pineapple, it's but like it's a, straight up coconut water. It's coconut, mm -hmm. I don't hate it, but it kind of tastes like a snow cone to me. It does, it does have a little bit of like a Yeah, like, a, a fake, like an artificial uh -huh. sweetener, like snow, that's why I say snow cone. So yeah, yeah, it has a fake side to me, but it does have a lot of coconut, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so let's go to B then. Okay. Different color. Again, you know what's on screen right now. This is much more pineapple mm -hmm. and a lot less coconut. In fact, I don't get mm -hmm. a lot of coconut at all. You get a hint at the end. Yeah. But it's like... This one's thicker to me. It's got Yeah, a, it's, it's like a warm pineapple. It's, yeah, warm pineapple and mm -hmm. then you've got, I feel like the coconut's like a, a subtle hint towards the end, but mm -hmm. it's not like and coming off of this of A, I, know. <laughs> I mean, maybe that was a bad thing going from A to B, but it's, it is definitely not as coconutty as, as A. Yeah, agreed. All right, let's go to C now. So we've done A and B, here's C, very murky. The other two are nice and clear. What do you think of C? Um, brighter pineapple, mm -hmm. not much coconut still. Mm -mm. Not a lot of coconut. <laughs> There's an end taste. It is. It really like always hits at the end. It never like, but this one's really um, acidic. Really? To hmm. me. It's got a little more acidity. It's I like feel like tangy. yes. My problem is the the very end. It it just has the feeling that you've got sunscreen stuck in the corner of your mouth and like it got in your mouth. That's what <laughs> it, it tastes like. And it, it's kind of gross. I don't think I get that. <laughs> does it not have a weird taste after? No, it stuff? does, but like, I don't think lingers. I don't it, think I know what sunscreen tastes like. Wow. When oh, I've, every time I would go for a run, I would have to put some on my face, and then inevitably mm. it would get there. Yeah, this one has a weird sunscreeny end, like, and the aftertaste is kind of it lingers for a while. I'm not a big fan of it. All right, D. Here's D. It's kind of murky. Mm-hmm. Also murky. Okay, I definitely think it's back to the warm pineapple. Yeah. It's not, maybe that's acidity you're thinking of. Maybe it's, that's what the and that's between bright something and warm. talking about the placement of the pineapple for people paying attention. It's warm pineapple versus, I guess, bright, maybe acidic. I like this one. I still get the weird aftertaste. Yeah, I don't like the, it, it's like, it's kind of pleasant for the first. Yeah, for the first if, minute. If it's a and five it has second, a weird aftertaste. If it's a five second spread, seconds one and two are like, okay, I get a little bit, but then it like devolves into like, Back into the sunscreen, and then it Which has. I a thought weird it was the applicants. coconut, but I don't think it is. No. Yeah, no, I'm not. It lingers in a weird way. Yeah, not a fan. no. Ugh, I feel like. Um, okay, some water. we're gonna keep going. We got two more. E. This is bright yellow. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And a little bubbly. What do you think about this one? I think. Hang on. It's the first one that I think I have a good balance mm -hmm. of the pineapple and the coconut. Okay. It's a little bit of a brighter pineapple. Mm -hmm. But I don't hate it. I usually am a warm pineapple flavor person, but I don't hate this. Yeah. Because it blends well with the coconut. Because mm -hmm. the coconut's pretty bright too, I think. Yeah. Coconut, yeah. I do. I do. And think I don't have a weird aftertaste. No weird aftertaste. The uh, I feel like the pineapple is very present. Of course, I feel like coconut's still not. Yeah. Not like it's definitely a, pineapple heavy, but I feel like if it's pina colada. And as I'm learning, it's really hard to incorporate coconut i mean it's yeah well whatever you did in a you just trace like tastes like straight up yeah maybe there's a blend of coconut. <laughs> i i like e so far of yeah all these i think so far if you, yeah i would agree with that sentiment mm -hmm. and last but not least we have f this one also has some bubbles which is mysterious also to very me very clear and it's also very clear yep what does that smell i don't know but this one's gone it's got a funkiness to it it does have a weird um it has a weird smell. it's kind of rubbery yeah i don't i'm not mm -mm. I don't know what I taste. I mean, it's very coconut heavy. Got a little mm -hmm. bit of that carbonation, which was not expected. No, that is not it for me. <laughs> <laughs> not, not good. Um, I would vote E. You as vote the, E? Yeah, I think so. It's got a little bit of bubble to it. It's got a nice um, flavor 
profile in the sense that you don't have an overpowering pineapple or coconut. It's got a pretty good blend. It's a little bit more pineapple heavy than the coconut. Yeah. But I do think that you don't have a weird aftertaste and it also doesn't have artificial coconut taste to me. So B and E are the same thing. Really? The only What's difference the difference in them? Is B is not carbonated. E is carbonated. Mm. And so I literally just took a part of B and I put it into this keg uh -huh. and I, I carbonated it. So it has some, some carbonation to it. B is, is flat. B is flat. I bet it like, but be, I mean, it's not carbonated. The carbonation adds carbonic acid, which lifts and gives some acidity, which yeah. is something you noted. It also adds some refreshing side, which I, I feel like this recipe kind of needed. There's yeah. a little bit of like a I refreshing agree. zing to it. It's surprising the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. I, I do think E is like the penultimate one, and uh, this is my final recipe. It's still not coconut heavy. I think, but I don't want it coconut heavy, I don't think. Right. If you wanted a, a coconut heavy version, you could honestly probably blend a little bit of the of A, which I'm, I'm what almost is a? certain A is, it's a, it's a concentrate using that concentrate that I had. And it was a concentrate in the primary. So using the concentrate gives you real, I guess, more coconut in this case. So there's a world where you can blend a little bit of the concentrate but in. But there's almost no pineapple in that. Right. But that's what I'm saying is if you use part of my pineapple process, Oh, and okay. then you did all that, you could get a little coconut flavor. But if you want to go all natural, this is the recipe, final recipe. And if you really want to take it to the next level, the the kegging is what takes it up there. And you can get this one gallon keg. This one gallon keg is, it's cost you some money, but um, this is what I carbonated it, carbonated in. And you can, uh, you can do one gallon if you're, if you have more, you can do a five gallon if you're bigger, but I feel like this, the last recipe, this whole video has been kind of long in, as far as tastings and things because it's taken a while. So I like this one the most though. E is my favorite, B is second place. Yeah, I would drink E in the summer. Mm -hmm. What's funny is this probably won't come out in the summer. This will, this video will be out <laughs> probably in the fall in like well, October when everybody's like. It's like you just, well, we just ended summer, I guess. And now you can think about making this in the summertime. But that's my ultimate recipe. I'm pretty pleased with this. It's been like a, I don't know, four months journey, four months, five months journey, I feel like, to do this. Mm -hmm. But I feel good about it and I uh, hope you go make it. So thank you to my wife for being part of the tasting. Of course. Anytime. And letting me suscept her to blind tasting. Um, moral of this story, coconut water, don't do it. It's coconut not Coconut water is gross. Yeah, not The it. concentrate works pretty well, but it's pretty coconut heavy. And using real ingredients takes some balance but coconut is just very hard to incorporate. If you have a, an idea that I did not figure out, uh, put it down in the comments and we'll chat about it. But uh, hopefully I'll see you guys in the future. So cheers.